Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My beloved brothers and sisters, the last week, it has been a hot topic whether our chickens that we are eating is halal or haram. Let me run you through to some very important points before we make that decision. Number one is firstly, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam disencouraged us to be obsessed with anything when it comes to food and drink. Meat itself, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have it occasionally. And Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi said that if a person eats meat every day, it makes his heart hard. Abu Musa Ash'ari radiallahu anhu was one day sitting and some people came and they saw him eating chicken. They found it actually, uh, you know, a bit, uh, a put off to eat chicken because of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped us from eating the julala or that chicken that runs around and eats the dirt. In those days, chickens were left free and these free chickens would eat dirt everywhere. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ said, when one of you wants to slaughter a chicken, he should first keep it in captivity for three days and feed it good feed and then slaughter it. So the system is clean. So because of that, they would not eat the meat. Abu Musa Shari radiallahu anhu said that I saw the Prophet ﷺ eating chicken. And Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ate chicken, but he ate chicken in a moderate measure. My point is that today the ummah is obsessed with chicken. Like if there's no chicken, our life cannot continue. My beloved, subhanallah, anything in extreme is no good. Now, obviously chicken is a delicacy because Allah calls it that. That is why when he speaks about Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَحْمِ طَيْرٍ مِّمَّا يَشْتَهُونَ and the meat or bird, the bird meat which they will crave for. Allah has put a specific taste to it, but uh, the ulama like Allama Dimiri rahmatullah in his Hayatul Hayawan mentions that why there's pros of eating chicken, mashallah, there's also cons. It is probably not very good for the cut. And uh, that is why as a Muslim and a Mu'min, we eat, alhamdulillah, in moderation. Now, in the Quran Kareem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that Ya ayyuhal ladina aman, O people of Iman, eat from that which is not only halal but tayyib. It is wholesome and pure. And similarly, not that instruction was not only given to the believers but was also given to the prophets. Ya ayyuhal rusul, O prophets, eat that which is not only halal but tayyib. Tayyib means wholesome. Now, if we see how our chickens are produced from the very beginning, Till the end, definitely it is not tayyib. And halal is the question that we are discussing now. Let's look at a normal chicken in the production line. These chickens are brought up on poultry farms and they are controlled. I challenge anyone, bring up a chicken in your backyard for a year and you will see that after one year, that chicken that you brought up and fed will not be over a kilo of meat. And they will be very thin, and they will not have the flesh that, you know, normally we just buy a chicken over in the butcher and very fleshy and soft. For that, subhanAllah, they uh, inject a lot of hormones and they feed them certain very unhealthy foods to be able to bloat that chicken. So a chicken is born and that chicken within six weeks to eight weeks is already a full grown chicken. Now, it's not possible if you take a normal chicken and see after six weeks, it's still a small chick or it's just, you know, developing feathers. It's just walking around. It's very small. So how do they make that small little chicken into a full-fledged chicken and can sell, you know, so many kilos of meat? It's based on what they're injecting it, which is very, very unhealthy. And that is having a detrimental effect on my and your health. Today, we find hormonal changes, especially in our girls, boys. And boys want to be like girls, girls want to be like boys. All these hormonal changes is all coming from this medicine and these types of drugs and antibiotics that is pushed into our poultry and we are consuming. The reason why is because of the economy. Uh, everything is driven by the economy. Everything is materialistic this day. And to make more money, you make chickens faster, more people buy, there's more money. Uh, the health issue and the health factor is last on mine. So this can't be tayyib. This can't be tayyib. 
it's uh, you know a different discussion of halal, but it can be tayyib. Now let's come to this actual um, matter of what has been brought up in the last week. Actually, I think it was a year ago or so, uh, One Path Network did do a detailed uh, video on this CAS uh, or CAS or gas stunning, um, putting in a specific atmosphere. And uh, this, um, these chickens are killed by uh, gas. Now, it created an uproar then, but we are very reactive. We are not proactive. So then there was an uproar and slowly died down. And now there's another, alhamdulillah, awareness there. People are a bit worried. How long is it going to last before we go back to our old ways? This is, this is not something new that we get a shock. Every day we're learning something. And alhamdulillah, as Muslims, our lens that we look at the world is that we are living for our akhirah. And if someone comes and pats our back and tells us, brother, your akhirah is being harmed, instead of fighting with them or challenging them, we rather understand it for our benefit and try to better ourselves to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My beloveds, look, every day I myself, I've studied and we've gone through all these things in the mashayikh, mashallah, but every day I'm learning something new. And every day I get my shock. Today alone I heard that, uh, you know, uh, BMW, for example, some of its um, logos inside the car, like the M or whatever, on the high models, they emboss it with pig leather, swine leather. Now, you know that swine leather is impermissible. It can never become clean. It's actually uh, swine leather is impure. It's najis. So that means if you touch that, then subhanAllah, it's najis. If you, if you wet and you touch it, you cannot pray with it. Uh, there's shoes that's been created with swine leather. There's leather jackets, and we need to be alert. And if someone comes to us and tells us, brother, watch, this is from pig leather. We need to be alert and, and, and willing to change, not to say, okay, I bought this car, it's $150,000. I'm not going to sell the car just because it's some pig leather. Why did you come and tell me? This is not the right approach. That means we hold our dunya more closer to our hearts than our akhirah. And we don't want to be disturbed when someone actually tells us we are wrong. We are living in a very luxurious, affluent, opulent little bubble. And we don't want anyone to disturb that. And that is wrong. A believer changes himself. He is not a god. He is a servant of Allah. Islam means submission. So coming to my point, I would say, subhanAllah, there's the, 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 the gas or the gas standing um, where chickens are actually taken. And they are put in a specific atmosphere, they, sp they put in crates, they put in a, a, a specific area, and then the gas is allowed to uh, spread freely. And this obviously attacks them. Uh, why is this done? Because in Australia, stunning is uh, crucial. Um, the regulation states that you need to stun, except if you have an exception. Now, there are plants that do not stun. They have an exception. For example, uh, the Jewish brothers, they do not stun. They do not stun because it's against their kosher needs. Now, my point is that if the Jews can stand together and put their arms together and make their, you know, religious needs uh, known and, uh, and it can be accommodated, then why the Muslims are not accommodated for? Is it because within ourselves we are throwing and blasting mud balls at each other? We are disunited. We don't have one voice. That's an issue that needs to be addressed. The thing is that it has been proven, not just locally, but globally, from you know, uh, in Malaysia, Indonesia, Dubai, and many other countries where gas stunning, they have documents rolling out that when these chickens are gassed, then definitely, maybe not all, but some of those chickens cannot survive through it, and there's irreversible death, that means Chickens will be taken out, and before the knife goes through and slaughters the chicken, it dies. And in Islamic terms, that is known as carrion. It's meta. And Allah says in the Quran Karim very clearly that meta is haram for you. Now, you know, some people say, you know, test has been done, and recently only 29 birds have been killed. Or, my brother, even if there's one, even if there is one chicken that dies, it's a problem. Because that chicken can be the chicken I'm eating tonight. 
Why is 29 less? Brother, let alone 29, even if one chicken dies in the system, and that one chicken is allowed to uh, filter to the Muslim community, and that comes on my plate, that is mayta and haram, and one Muslim is eating haram. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullah Ali, gave up eating goat for nine years because he heard a goat was stolen in his community. And he said, probably that goat gets sold to some of my students. They, <coughs> they cook it, and they offer it to me, and I eat it, and I'm eating haram. Imam Shafi, rahmatullah Ali, would not drink the water from the taps in Egypt. He would rather go to a well, pull out his own water and drink, because he said the tap system of Egypt at that time was created with some usury and interest money, and he would not drink that water. My beloveds, our ulama and our mashayikh went to great heights in exercising the taqwa and fear of not allowing anything to enter their bodies, which is, let alone haram, doubtful. <clears throat> so, my beloveds, it has been proven over and over again that when the scarce system is being used, animals are actually dying, chickens are actually dying, and that is meta, and hence it is haram. It is haram, it is, you know, it is not only, tayyib is out of the window, I explained to you, it's not even halal, it's not even halal. And it's not something new that we all have to be, you know, shocked what's happening. This has been for years. Ulama have been speaking about it, it has been proven, and if we're only hearing about it now, then we need to get our act together, inshallah ta'ala. The second thing is electric stunning. That is when a chicken is, you know, put in some cold water and this water has an electric current. So the electric current stuns the animal. The chicken then goes numb for a while and then they slaughter the chicken. Now, although certain bodies say and a lot of ulama says this is, you know, acceptable, I can assure you I myself in Brazil and also in South Africa have overlooked many plants that do this electric stunning. And I promise you, maybe the casualties of these birds are not as much as the cats, but they are casualties. I remember myself one day walking into a plant and asking them, I want to take a few birds out. I took five birds out, and from every five birds, I took several times five birds out, two or three birds were actually dead. They never even revived. They never get up. Now, they attributed that to probably that the electric current was too high. Now, the regulation of the electric current, how high the electric current must be, because that is manual, people change it all the time, depending on how big the birds are and how fast the line is. So, subhanAllah, that can be a mistake. It can be that maybe from yesterday they forgot to change it. And there's definitely 101% I've seen with my eyes, even on the electric stunning, that chickens are dying before the slaughter process. They then say, okay, if it dies, then after that, when it goes into the, you know, the boiling um, machine, which pulls off the feathers, the animal is purple. And the reason why is because it never bled. Hence, there is a person manually, physically takes that chicken off and he discards it. But my brothers, subhanAllah, if you say that about a cow or you say that about a sheep, I can understand. They're big and you can see them. And a lamb or a sheep goes every minute through the line. A cow every three minutes through the line. A chicken every half a second. Now, if there's few chickens that died, how does this guy in few seconds pull these chickens out, especially if we are working with non-Muslim companies that just want the buck. If there's no one seeing, why would they just not pass that through? So I can tell you out of my own experience that even the electric stunning is problematic, right? It's problematic. It's not as bad as this, the cast, but it is problematic. And I'm not just saying this because, you know, subhanAllah, I heard it from somewhere. I was very involved in actually overlooking the halal and the haram back in South Africa and also back in Brazil. And I have first-hand, alhamdulillah, you know, experiences with these abattoirs. Now, coming back, besides this, leave the stunning process. Say if a chicken is not stunned, there's another issue, and that is machine slaughter. Now, 300 ulama, great ulama, have been asked about machine slaughter. 
where a human being does not touch the chicken at all. It's all done by the machines. Right? Allah says in the Quran al Kareem, Illa ma dhakkaytum, except that which you as a human being slaughters. Now today, subhanallah, we know that a human being is mukallaf, he's responsible. You know, you can hold someone responsible. Did you cut? Did you not cut? Did you cut that vein? You never cut that vein. Uh, did you say bismillah? You never say bismillah. You can hold someone responsible. He's mukallaf. But if a person is not mukallaf, a person, you know, it's a machine, it's a robot. Then why don't we get robots for our salah as well? You know, imagine this amazing robot we get. We can make him look like Sheikh Sudais, mashallah. We can put for him a beautiful abaya and a jubba. We can make him look like Sheikh Shurem. And, you know, in China today, they're making everything, mashallah. We can make him, um, you know, and uh, we can actually program him for every salah to read with a different voice, mashallah. We can pre load Mufti Meng's bayans in him, mashallah, and Sheikh uh, Nu'man Ali Khan's bayans in him. And we can turn him around, and mashallah, I think. You know, the, 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 the members of the masjids will enjoy him. Uh, they, he will listen to what they say. And uh, besides that, mashallah, you know what? He will be there on time for every salah. Why don't we get robots for adhan too? If everything is going to become mechanical, then what remains of our deen? And that is the reason why, subhanallah, when it comes to machine slaughter, 300 ulama were asked if machine slaughter is permissible. 296 said no, four only said yes, and those four also put conditions. Now, you can tell me, you know, in the olden days, mashallah, it was easy to grab some chickens and slaughter them and eat them. Today, there's mass production. There's so many thousands of people that are actually eating chicken, and if you're going to go the old traditional way of slaughter, many people will not be able to eat chicken because we will not be able to keep up with the demand. The supply will not be able to keep up with the demand. The answer to that, when Mufti Taqi Uthmani, Tamad Barakatul Ali, uh, came to Australia and he actually took a tour in some of the abattoirs in Queensland, uh, he said, look, the solution to this is to have machine slaughter on a hybrid system where a human being is still involved in the slaughter of the animal, but majority of the work is done by the machine. So they shackle the chicken, the chicken then comes on the production line. There is a spinning, rotating um, blade. And the human being himself touches the animal and pushes it. A light push through the blade, which then gives a clear cut. And that can be halal. So it's all run by machines. And then after that, it goes through the process. And it gets cut, it gets cleaned. Everything by machines, that's possible. But they have to be a human being there to say, Bismillahi Allahu Akbar. Or at least Bismillah. Allah says in the Quran Karim, Mimma dhukira ismullahi alayhi. Allah's name is taken upon that particular animal. Now it has to be taken upon every animal individually. I mean, the, the, the fiqh itself says that if a person said Bismillahi Allahu Akbar to slaughter a certain sheep, and that sheep runs away, and another sheep comes, and he slaughters the second sheep with the first Bismillahi Allahu Akbar, that animal will not be halal. Because he said that Bismillahi Allahu Akbar for the first sheep, not the second. Now, when the line of, 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 of these chickens are running, there are some plants that run up to half a million. Half a million chickens, subhanAllah, 500,000 chickens, right? Uh, some are doing like 20,000, 30,000 birds a day. When, when, when you're going on these fast lines, there's a chicken every half a second. Sometimes two chickens per second, two and a half chickens per second. And how, I mean, if I give you a tasbih right now, and I tell you, read Bismillahi Allahu Akbar, Bismillahi Allahu Akbar, no matter how fast you read, you will not be able to say two and a half times per second, and after 15 minutes max, your mouth will be dry and you will not be able to keep up, let alone saying that, at two and a half chickens per second saying Bismillah ya Allahu Akbar and not just saying it sitting down, taking a knife and actually slaughtering or actually taking those chickens and putting it. It's not possible. So then what they said, instead of Bismillah, say Allah and they say Allah, Allah. And then they say, you know what, you don't have to say it for every chicken. Just sit back and just say it. And then there are even certain abattoirs that I've seen with my own eyes 
they have replaced the man completely with the machine. Like how they replaced the actual slaughterer with the machine, they have replaced the man with the machine. So they actually have YouTube on the back with a, a six hour looped uh, Bismillahi Allahu Akbar, Bismillahi Allahu Akbar. Actually, use, you know, Mishari Al Affas, they use Sheikh Abdul Basit, so it becomes extra halal. Oh, where do I start? If you go into the thick books, you will find the only time the actual person is omitted from actual slaughter is in hunting. When you don't have control over the animal, the animal is too wild, you can't actually catch it and slaughter it. That is when, when you're using the bow and arrow, or you're using a gun, but it needs to be very sharp, the bullet, because the animal can't die on impact, it has to die of a wound that causes the blood to bleed, the animal to bleed, and it actually bleeds out, right? So when you are doing that, or you're sending your dogs, you say, Bismillahi Allahu Akbar, on shooting, or letting the dog out. Then you have to make an attempt to chase that animal, and make sure you reach the animal in time to slaughter it. If you do not reach in time and it dies, it will be halal, because you read Bismillahi Allahu Akbar, and you tried your utmost best to reach it in time. But it has to be cut open, and it must bleed out. If you reach it in time, and that animal is still living, then it becomes compulsory for you because now you have control over it to slaughter it yourself. That's on a wild animal. This is a domestic animal which is in our hands. And how can we say that the man is exempted from slaughtering it? The machine will slaughter it. There's a mas'a that comes in the kitabs that if they set such a trap where the animal falls in a hole and there are spikes that actually, you know, subhanAllah, kills the, 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 the wild animal, and it bleeds to death, but a human being will not be able to touch it. All four madhabs, Maliki, Hanbali, Shafi, and Hanafi say it's haram. Because attempt is not made to actually reach it in time to kill it. We're just taking it for granted that that trap will kill it for us. So how can then we come to the conclusion that a machine slaughtering an animal, and in some instances, machines reading the Bismillahi Allahu Akbar, or even if there's a physical person there, he is not be able to keep up with the speed of reading Bismillahi Allahu Akbar for every chicken, and subhanAllah, in many a time, there's even non-Muslims doing that. If the person is a non-Muslim, if he's not a Ahl Kitab, if he is an atheist or he does not have any belief system, even if he takes the name of Allah, it will not be halal. I've seen this in Brazil, in many an abattoir of Brazil, they cannot keep up with the demand of finding Muslims. Muslims there know the demand, they want high pay, they just find normal poor Brazilians and subhanAllah, they give them the job of reading Bismillah Allahu Akbar and slaughtering. My beloved subhanAllah, this brings us to the third one, which is the machine slaughter and the taking of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, someone may say, okay, there's the hybrid system. And that is where the person actually has the chicken and he is passing it through the line. Okay, fine. But as we know that people do not follow those regulations. Mawlam Mufti Taqi Uthmani, Damat Barakatu Ali, when he came here, he put those conditions. That number one, the line should not go more than certain amount of chickens. Number two, that subhanAllah, the chickens should be, every chicken, there should be someone reading and reciting. But were those conditions actually fulfilled? Allahu A'la, maybe in one abattoir or two, maybe yes, but in all the abattoirs, no. So they took that from him, okay, he's okay with machine slaughter, but they never follow the rules and regulations. And today, actually, they have, you know, put up the speed of those animals to more than, you know, 120 to 150 birds per minute, which is impossible for someone to actually read and someone to actually control. The other issue we have is that when those birds do go through, there's sometimes certain chickens that can lift its head very easily. They already understand there's something wrong. They lift their heads and they go over the rotating machine without its neck being seared. It then goes in the, you know, the smoldering machine or whatever you call it. It's in boiling hot water and it dies in there a natural death. So it was alive when it went through. It was not slaughtered at all. And that happens. It's possible. The other thing is that the machine which has the boiling hot water is taking whole chickens in. And there's a masala amongst the fuqaha that if an animal is dipped or immersed in boiling hot water, that 
animal becomes highly makru. Even if it's slaughtered halal, slaughter it halal, and then putting in boiling hot water immediately because the feces and the intestines and the inner organs are still inside the animal and the boiling hot water, you know, allows all that um, feces and all the impurities to mix with the body. And this is what's happening. So certain ulama will tell you that no, the, 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 the water temperature is controlled and it's not boiling hot. It's just hot enough to soften the feathers for it to be plucked out easily. If that's followed, alhamdulillah. But there are some abattoirs that do not follow that and the water is pretty much boiling hot and that will then again. So what I'm saying is the chicken is already six weeks. It's already pumped up with a whole lot of antibiotics, which is already unhealthy and it is not tayyib for you to eat. Then it is shackled and subhanallah, it's probably going through gas, which is the gas system, which probably renders that chicken already dead. If not, it's going through an electrocuted system, which also maybe not as much, but still has the possibility of rendering it dead. Then it is coming through a process. Not sure if there's someone there really reading Bismillah ya Allahu Akbar for every chicken. Then the other problem is actually the machine that's slaughtering the animal or is there a physical person slaughtering the animal. Even if that is evaded, it comes through. There's a possibility of your chicken staying alive and being killed by the boiling hot water. And even if that is all sorted out, the animal is then going into that boiling hot water and some of the boiling hot water is not regulated where then it mixes the feces of the animal and the intestines inside with the meat which renders that meat makru. Now, look, as I told you, this might cause us all a shock, but it's something that we need to be awake. What is the solution? I told you the problem. And many people are telling us the problem, and it's being repeated over and over now again. We can, you know, say to ourselves, Alhamdulillah, I've been eating chicken all this time, who cares? And I just continue and act as if, you know, I never hear anything. But my beloved, subhanAllah, Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa said, that, that person who eats haram meat, haram, or anything haram, usually haram meat, doubtful things, this person, Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa says, comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he has disheveled hair, dirty clothes, and he begs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his mercy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He's desperate, he's crying, but his eating is haram, his drinking is haram. It is proven that when a person eats haram, his du'as are not accepted for 40 days. You know, Hajjad bin Yusuf had this continuous threat from a group of ulama, they were very, very pious. And People told him that you need to be careful because if they lift up their hands, they probably, subhanAllah, will flatten you with their du'as. So he called them for a da'wah, a friendly da'wah, I call you, please, this, that. And in the end of the day, when they came, he fed them all haram. And when he fed them haram, they all ate haram. He then began doing whatever he wanted to. And someone said, fear the du'a of the ulama. He said, I have a 40 day window for me to do whatever I want. I fed them all haram. Hence, none of their du'as will be accepted against me. Now someone may say, you know what, we just follow our local provider, local city fire, we follow, why must we worry about it? If someone said it's halal, it's their owners on the day of Qiyamah, they will sort it out with Allah, we can do whatever we wish. My brothers, that type of notion and attitude, why, 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 why is it there only with our deen? Why when a certain doctor says something that doesn't make sense to us, why we go for a second opinion? Why we make sure, why we go to the best hospital? Because our health means something to us, no? Why when it, it comes to our car and there's something and the mechanic says we can't fix it or the mechanic says something, it doesn't make sense, it's not sitting right, we'll get another mechanic, we'll take it to a specialized agent. Why? Because we want that noise gone. Why when it comes to our deen, any Tom, Dick and Harry, we just put our reliance on? Today to take out a halal certification certificate, you can do it, you know, in five minutes. $200 online, you can get a halal certification. There are people, I remember one day there was someone certifying some meat. I called the man, I called the man, and subhanAllah, he never ever visit the restaurant that he certified. Just over the internet, he certified them. 
He asked them two, three questions and he certified them. So my beloved, how can we just, you know, trust anyone when it comes to our deen? You see, I'll explain to you. If someone tells you there is no poison in these chickens yet, but you heard from somewhere there was or there is some poison or contamination, will you trust this man and just eat it? You'll be worried. Because what if I eat that chicken that has the poison, I'll die. Yes, you will not be charged by Allah for suicide because you trusted someone that said there's no poison. But if there is poison, you're going to die. So same thing. You might not be answerable to Allah for the sin of eating chicken that is carrion or chicken that has been killed the wrong way. But it's going to have its desired effect on your spirituality. Naturally, you're not going to feel to make salah. Naturally, it's going to have that you're eating meter, you're eating carrion, it's going to bring you down. Spiritually, you're not going to feel uplifted. The barakah will be gone, the du'as will not be accepted. So something we have to understand. Mufti Rafi Uthmani, who is the brother of Mufti Taqi Uthmani, rahmatullah alayhi, he just passed away recently. He has given a fatwa and he has said that in today's time, taking the disloyalty of even Muslims and taking the treacherous nature and taking the amount of greed that is in our society, it is wajib upon us to inquire about our meat. It's no more mustahab or sunnah, we go to a place, we should acquire, you know, do some reason. It is wajib. It is fard. It is wajib for us to find out the source of our meat. And not only in Western countries, in Muslim countries. The Hayatul uh, Kibar of ulama in Saudi Arabia some years ago gave a fatwa that all imported meat in Sa Saudi Arabia is haram. Now, I know this is going to come to a big shock to many of you. The Hayatul, this is Ibn Baz, rahmatullah Ali, all big ulama. Volume 2, the, 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 the fatwa is still there. Volume 2, I, if I'm not mistaken, page 605 or so. The fatwa is there of the Hayatul Kibar al ulama, more than 60 ulama of Saudi Arabia, including Bin Baz, rahimahullah, and these big ulama have Ibn Uthaymeen and all of them have written that those chickens that are imported in Saudi Arabia is haram. Mufti Taqi Uthmani have taken some snippets from there, included it in his Ahkamu Dabayik. Yes, mashallah, a, a, a great alim that stays in um, America, Mawlana Abdullah Nana. He actually came down when I was the imam at the Gold Coast Masjid, uh, assistant imam, and we spent some time together and he went around looking at some abattoirs. And subhanAllah, he has reproduced that entire fatwa. And not only that, he has called the Hayatul Ulama, that this was a few years ago, are you still on the same stance? And they have affirmed, we are still on our same stance, that the chickens that are imported into the country of Saudi Arabia, there is no overlooking regulatory body as such that is strict, that is looking at every chicken. I have been to Brazil, abattoirs, I've seen. It's all machine slaughtered. There are Brazilians that are not even Muslim slaughtering. There are, subhanAllah, a lot of inconsistencies. And then these chickens are imported into Saudi Arabia. And subhanAllah, people go to Mecca and Medina. They are by the KFC, McDonald's, al Bayk, And all these chickens are not according to Mawlana Abdullah Nana or according to Mufti this one or that one. The Hayatul Ulama, Kibar al Ulama of Saudi Arabia says it's haram. Now you want to worry, on the day of Arafah, you stood there and you cried in front of Allah, but immediately after that you had the al Bayk box that was given to you, and that chicken was from Brazil, which was slaughtered by a non-Muslim, and you want to ask me why your du'as are not accepted. Now subhanAllah, my beloveds, this is serious stuff. This is serious stuff. You can be in the best of... And alhamdulillah, you know, this has actually been brought up with the prince. So subhanAllah, when they had these, uh, you know, fiqhi discussions, some of the ulama from UK and USA stood up and told the prince himself that this is what is happening. And he said, I never know. I never even know all these things. They're not even aware. There's so much, you know, negligence from deen because there's so much worry about dunya, dunya, dunya. And we forget our deen, subhanAllah. But... In Saudi Arabia now, alhamdulillah, there's some sort of maturity coming. And alhamdulillah, in the sense of now the fawaki and watani, they are local chickens that are hand slaughtered. And some of the restaurants like Tazij and that are using these hand slaughtered chickens inside the kingdom. But then you also get other abattoirs inside the kingdom. For example, Al-Yawm, 
that are using machine slotted. So, you know, the change is coming, but it's slow. The change is coming, but it's slow. You know what? The change will happen with the money. It's where you put your money. As a consumer, if all of us stop buying certain chickens because we are 100%, it's not right. And we put our money in a different avenue, in a different alley, in a different place. Definitely that will send a very strong message. And they will feel the brunt. They will see their sales drop. They will have to change things. But if, alhamdulillah, we keep on, you know, putting that blinkers on and say everything is fine, alhamdulillah, let's just go on. You are damaging your akhirah and nothing is going to change. Change is difficult, but when we make that change, it's better, not for only for us, but for our upcoming generations. Look at the Jews. Subhanallah, they support one another. If a brother is doing hand-slotted chickens and he's trying to make his business happen, how much support does the Muslim community give him, alhamdulillah? And again, Ramadan came, Ramadan went, these, uh, you know, restaurants need to survive. Um, what happens is when they don't have too much traffic buying the halal from them, slowly they lose heart and then they revert back to what is not right. There's another entire discussion about the lamb. There's a discussion about cows. But the difference between chicken, lamb and cows is lamb is stunned. They have the gun and they shoot the head. And similarly with the cow, it's stunned. They shoot the head. Now, subhanAllah, sometimes they rivet the head, which does not damage the skull or the brains. And that is, you know, taken, okay, it's stunned and it can move on. But some of them are stunned so badly, damages the brains, it cuts the skull open. And that renders the animal unfit for eating. Now, I have been to some abattoirs here in Victoria myself. I take my students, we visit. They immediately, if a cow is riveted so badly where it damages its skull and the brain, there's someone there that is inspecting, that cow will be taken aside and quarantined. Quarantined. It will be taken aside. It will be then sell, sold to the non-halal market. That is why I cannot just be reassured because a certain animal comes from a certain abattoir, automatically it's halal. Because there are even animals there that are non-halal. They are actually quarantined. They are taken out of the line because they died before or they were damaged before. And they are sold separately to a non-halal market. So unless and until we are 100% that it is halal and certified by a body that we can put our trust in, unfortunately we... Now what's the solution? Where do we go from here? I would say those people who are having freely the cast chickens that are produced from any abattoir, just has some halal certification, but we know they are gassed before, stop, stop my brother. You're not going to get a more blunt warning than this, stop. Enough. You can't be eating mater and carrion. Forget about all these wars happening and all this cross, just stop. It's for your own good and for your family's good. If Subhanallah, you want to revert to electric, um, you know, subhanallah, stunned animals. It's probably a better option. It's not the best, but at least there's more regulatory conditions there. And it's probably a better option from the two. And if you are, alhamdulillah, doing hen slaughter, you're eating, mashallah, now in Melbourne, in Sydney, in many other places, we have brothers doing the hen slaughter, probably a little bit more expensive. Probably, subhanAllah, you don't have, you know, the supply as much as you can just go and buy, sometimes less, sometimes it comes a bit late, but you rather deal with that and knowing that, alhamdulillah, I'm eating something which is much more wholesome and halal. So this is putting, you know, things into perspective and bringing to you everything in a nutshell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us as an ummah to be united and to see our problems and address our problems and work together, inshallah, in working out a way. A lot of people want to do hand slaughter, but again, everything is manipulation. There's a manipulation from the top of live birds that controls the live birds. You don't get the supply of live birds. Why? Because they want to make money. They want the big, 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 you know, abattoirs to have the monopoly over the live birds. So every small Tom, Dick and Harry doesn't come on the side and start buying live birds and opening their own abattoirs. But if the Muslims stand united, we are over a million people, alhamdulillah, in this country, and we all stand united and we say and we demand. This is what we want, I'm 100% sure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where there is a will, there's a way, and we have the sincerity and the unity and the knowledge and the guidance 
Allah Ta'ala will make it happen, inshaAllah Ta'ala. May Allah make it easy for all of us. May Allah Ta'ala grab barakah in our lives. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala solve this chicken issue, inshaAllah Ta'ala, so we can focus on bigger issues. Jazakum Allah khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Amen. Uh -huh.